Block 71, since its launch, has become firmly established at the center of Singapore's tech startup ecosystem. To share research into its audience, I'd like to welcome to the stage director of the NUS Entrepreneurship Center, Wong Po Kam. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. How many of you have heard of Launchpad at One North or Block 71? And how many of you actually work there? Well, the Business Times has called the Launchpad the epicenter of Singapore's startup ecosystem, and The Economist has actually called it the world's most highly packed entrepreneurial ecosystem. So today, I hope to share with you some fun facts and figures based on some research that we have done over the last two years that will highlight what makes this uh, location a vibrant and dynamic hub for startups. But first, I want to give you a brief history about how it all started. For those of you who are from outside Singapore, you may think that this is just another of those top-down initiatives by the government. The truth is, it happened almost by accident. Way back in 2010, the government had decided to demolish a series of old flattered factory buildings that are located in the uh, Ayer Raja Industrial Estate. We at NUS, with the funding support of the then Media Development Authority of Singapore and in partnership with Singtel Innoate, convinced the landlord, the government landlord, JTC at that time, to give us just one of the, uh, the blocks and the one they gave us was uh, Block 71, for us to do an experiment to see if we can turn it into a startup hub. I guess we have done such a good job that the government had changed its mind and decided not only not to demolish uh, Block 71, but to renovate the entire industrial estate and turn it into a startup hub, which they now call Launchpad. So the first fun fact I want to share with you is that Something like one-fifth to one-quarter of all active tech startups in Singapore today are located within this area. And all the major tech sectors that you witness as rapidly growing in Singapore today are represented in Launchpad. However, just sheer number of startups does not make a place vibrant or dynamic. So what makes an ecosystem dynamic? I want to highlight three things to you. First is the diversity of the players in the ecosystem. Secondly is the density of connectivity among the players. And third is the speed of evolution and growth. Let me start with the diversity. The launch pad is not just about the number of startups there, but it is also about having other key players in the ecosystem including investors, VCs, accelerators, incubators, ecosystem facilitators, and other service providers. This diversity of players is very important because they all contribute to making the startup uh, successful. Among the uh, startup community that are located inside the launch pad itself, there is also great diversity in terms of the age of the startup firms and also in terms of the sector that, that are being represented uh, in terms of the high-tech sectors. And if you look at the right-hand side, these are the uh, words that the startup themselves use to describe what is their uh, technology specialization. Yeah? You can see a wide diversity. What also is increasingly interesting is that over the last two, three years, we have an increasing number of large corporations have decided to embed themselves within the launch pad because they recognize the importance of tapping on the uh, rich startup community to help them achieve their innovation faster. And so they locate their corporate accelerator within the uh, ecosystem. In fact, just this morning, uh, Pier 71 was announced. This is the joint initiative between the Maritime Port Authority of Singapore and us and US Enterprise to help develop the startup ecosystem to support the whole shipping and maritime community. We call it PIER 71, or Port Innovation Ecosystem Reimagined. So this is just one example of how 
the diversity of the uh, ecosystem help add, add to the uh, vibrancy of the place. Next, I want to talk about network connectivity. In early 2016, NUS Enterprise, we conducted a joint research with Endeavour, a global entrepreneurship organization on entrepreneurs in Singapore, London, and New York City to find out how well connected are the entrepreneurs to other key players in the ecosystem. This is a, a picture that shows you the network connection between the entrepreneurs and other key players in the ecosystem. So the second fun fact I want to highlight to you today is that an entrepreneur who is located in the launch pad on average has twice the number of strong links they have with other key ecosystem players than an entrepreneur who is located outside the launch pad. Another interesting aspect of this is that we found from those startups that initially were not in the launch pad, but then moved into the launch pad when the launch pad became uh, established. And as a result, the density of their network connection increased significantly. We also shown that they have a much greater diversity of the kind of connection they have with other ecosystem players. We have further validated this finding through another study that we have done in late 2016, early 2017. We surveyed another 530 startups, and this slide highlights some interesting differences between startups that are located in the launch pad versus those that are outside. As you can see, firstly, the startup in the launch pad are much more internationally connected. More of them have sales from overseas, and more of them have subsidiary operations overseas. Uh, the bottom part of the chart also tells you that more of them are engaged with other ecosystem players, including having mentors, uh, having participated in accelerators and incubators, uh, having received some government funding support, and having investment by angel or venture capitalists. And I want to pick up on this last point. As you can see here, that close to two-thirds of the startups that are located within the launch pad have received some form of investment by angel investors or VCs versus only just over one quarter for those that are located outside. Now I want to talk about the uh, dynamics of change of the uh, startup community in the launch pad over time. We have conducted three census, three rounds of census of startup in the launch pad. The first we did was in November 2015. There we counted 216 active tech startup company. We then went back and uh, do another census 14 months later in March 2017, and we found a significant increase in startup from 216 to 361. However, what is most interesting is the change that happened in this period. What we found is that of the startup that were there in November 2015, only 40% continue to be in the launch pad 14 months later. Almost half of them have moved out and 14% has shut down. And what this means is that if you look at the startup in the launch pad in March 2017, only 23% were incumbents and 77% actually moved in within the last 14 months. That's a significant churn, yeah? We continue uh, and conducted a census just two months ago now we found even more startup, active ones, 439. And again, we find a very interesting churn. Only 64% of those startups that we counted in March 2017 are still operating in the launch pad. 26% have moved away, and 10% has closed down. And so you can see that only 55% of the uh, startup that are located in the launch pad two months ago were there uh, within the last 12 months. Uh, sorry, were there uh, more than 12 months. Yeah? 45% came in within the last 12 months. So this illustrates to you the dynamism of the place. For an ecosystem to be vibrant, there has to be continuing renewal and change. And this is also manifested in the way that the startups scale up. Uh, I have here some example of startups that have scaled up to become much bigger companies. And there are three inter interesting patterns here uh, illustrated by this example. In the first, 
they actually scale up to other parts of Singapore. So for example, you know of Carousel, they started in Block 71, when they grow too big, then they moved to uh, Capital Towers in Tanjung Paga. Or uh, Rossimatic, they had moved to uh, Science Park 1. The second way they scale up is that they scale up within the launch pad, but they move to another part of the, of the launch pad. An example would be Shopback, they move from Block 71 to Block 77, or WeSense, they move from Block 71 to 67. A third is that they scale up internationally. Here I have two examples. PetSnap, for example, started in Block 71, but quickly moved completely out of Singapore into uh, Suzhou, and then later into London. But recently, they have come back to Singapore to establish their R&D headquarter. Another example is Wonder Labs, uh, that started initially in Block 71 as well, quickly moved to another location in Singapore, and now they are in eight cities in Indonesia. So this dynamic growth is uh, what we hope to see coming out of the uh, company that enter the uh, Launchpad ecosystem. Along with this dynamic churn, you also see interesting shift in the pattern of the startup. So this chart shows you, for example, 57% of the startup uh, way back in November 2015 are in what is called the infocom and media sectors. This had reduced to less than 40% by April this year. In contrast, those that are in financial and business information, energy and uh, engineering and biomedical and health has, in has increased significantly over this, this two years period. And the right-hand panel shows you some of the hot tech sector in Singapore. Again, they have significantly increased their presence in the uh, launch pad. This again illustrates the dynamism of the place, that it will continue to renew itself, moving into new hot growth areas and so on. This pro uh, picture also highlights an interesting aspect about the uh, kind of startup that are located in the launch pad. As you can see on the left hand side, the sweet spot for the uh, startup in the launch pad are those between three to five years old. Almost 55% uh, of the startup are within this uh, range. In contrast, startups that are located outside the launch pad have a larger percentage which are younger and also a larger percentage which are more mature, more than five years old. Even though there is a smaller percentage of startups in the launch pad that are more mature, in other words, they are less than five years old, the, interestingly, the startup in the launch pad on average employ more people and they grow much faster than startup located outside the launch pad, and also the percentage of the, the startup that are in the launch pad that can be called in some sense gazelle, meaning that they are achieve certain minimum employment or sales side and yet still going very fast, is also significantly higher. If you look at the entrepreneur behind the startup in the launch pad, interestingly, you can see here that the founders are younger, uh, there is less female founders and maybe equal uh, uh, share of uh, founders who are Singaporean versus foreigners. However, it's interesting to note that within the launch pad itself, if you compare the newer startup, that means startup that are less than three years old, versus startup that is a bit older, you, f you find that there is a significant increase in the share of startups that are founded by female, a lower age, and also a higher percentage of Singaporeans. What makes this uh, ecosystem of Block 71 and Launchpad really vibrant is that it has increasing global connections. This diagram kind of shows you that although we started at Block 71 in Singapore, we now have Block 71 in San Francisco, we have Block 71 in Suzhou, China, and last year we have developed Block 71 in Jakarta. And here are some examples of the startup that have gone to these places. And of course, these international linkages is more than just physical locations. We are also having increasing connection through video conferencing, linking events in Singapore that are beamed live to all these overseas locations and vice versa. The finding I have presented to you about uh, the dynamism of the launch pad is actually part of a larger range of, of research that we are conducting on the startup ecosystem in Singapore 
and we have put most of the information that we, we have on this product called Tech SG, and you can find more data about what are the key uh, tech startups in Singapore, who are the entrepreneurs behind them, who are the investors, uh, the investors in them, which are the incubators that supported them, and so on, by visiting Tech SG. And I'm happy to also announce that we have also started to build a similar mapping of the tech startup ecosystem in Indonesia. And uh, this brief chart tells you, for example, there's also interesting differences in the pattern of startups that are located in Yogyakarta and Bandung versus Jakarta. And hopefully next year, I'll be able to uh, tell you more about the dynamism of the Indonesian tech startup scene. And for those of you who are from other cities in uh, ASEAN country, if you'd like to collaborate with us to develop a similar, similar mapping for your city as well, I look forward to the opportunity to discuss collaboration with you. Thank you very much.